Hey folks, it's been a while since we've done one of these. Today, what I want to cover is some of the upcoming changes to the authentication mechanisms of Microsoft 365 DSC. You might have seen over the past few releases, we've changed the way we're actually authenticating against all the workloads. So um, a few releases ago, what we've done is when you do an export using export entry 65 DSC configuration, the first thing you're going to see at the top is it's going to go and connect to all the workloads that you've requested the method to go and export components from. So for example, if you're doing an extract of the Azure AD application and Teams calling policies, right at the beginning, it's going to go and authenticate against Azure AD, and then it's going to go and authenticate against Microsoft Teams. Okay, so we're standardizing that. The other thing that we're doing as well is, I mean, let's face it, the dependencies right now are all over the place. For Exchange Online, you need to use the Exchange Online management shell. Same thing for security and compliance. The SharePoint Online stuff is using the patterns and practices, the PNP module. Uh, Teams is using the Microsoft Teams module. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to standardize the underlying dependencies. And the standard API for Microsoft 365 is the Microsoft Graph. So we are standardizing all of our dependencies to start using more and more of the Microsoft Graph component. Right? So we've released a change um, this past release. So we're, uh, today we're actually September 20th, 2021. So the past release, which would have been the release for the 15th of September, we introduced that change to the Intune module. So under the cover, it's officially using Microsoft Graph. This week, we're gonna be rolling the same thing, but with Azure AD. Okay, so in the past, the Azure AD used to use the Azure AD preview module. Now it's gonna start using the Microsoft Graph PowerShell SDK. Just like it used to be, right? You're gonna be able to authenticate using credentials or service principle. If you just pass in your credentials, by default, it's gonna go in and it's gonna authenticate with the Microsoft Graph PowerShell application. So this is the application it's gonna use by default under the cover. Of course, you can bring your own application pass in either an app secret or a certificate thumbprint, which is by the way, what we're standardizing on. So you're gonna be able to use a thumbprint or bring in your own secret. And essentially, when you, you just pass in credentials, it's gonna go and try to leverage that application. So for example, let me just quickly bring something up here. So if I'm going in and I'm actually trying to go and do an export of the Azure ED group lifecycle policy and Azure ED tenant details. I run this. So what it's going to try to do the first thing is it's going to authenticate to the Microsoft Graph and then it's going to try to go and export the information related to those two uh, components. And the first thing it says is the user or administrator has not consented to use of the application. Right? And it's going to tell you that you need to go and grant additional information or permissions to the application. But how do you define or how do you determine what permissions are required? Well, there are many ways, right? The first one is you can go on the official docs on Microsoft.com, hunt down the documentation and figure out what they are. But we made it easier for you to go and consume. So we have a method now called get entry 65 DC compile permission list. And what you do is you just pass in the list of resources you want to interact with. And what it will do is it will actually scan information about those resources. And actually, let me just I just realized I had a typo here. Uh, but it's going to come back and it's going to tell me two things. It's going to tell me what permissions you need, like what are the basic permissions you would need for uh, reading information, so doing just an extract, and what are the minimal permissions you're going to need if you also want to go and automate that workload. This information here is actually taken from uh, a new set of files that we're introducing for workloads that are on the Microsoft Graph. And what you're gonna see is that some of the resources actually now have a settings.js file. And this is where we're specifying what permissions are required for the read and update uh, operations. Okay, so this is where it's taking this from. Now, from a dependency perspective, you can always take a look at what dependencies we have for the module by looking at the PowerShell data file, so the PSD1 that we have at the root of the project. And that's gonna tell you all the dependencies that we're leveraging. The Microsoft Graph SDK, the PowerShell SDK, is split across about 20 something different modules. Reason for this is if you go in right now and you do install module Microsoft.graph, it's automatically gonna go and download all those sub modules and that accounts for almost one gigabyte of modules, right? So you're in for a treat. So what we're doing here is we're going and we're selectively picking the components that we need. We're gonna start introducing more and more as we go. Right now, again, 
Azure AD, Intune, and Planner are the only ones that are on the Microsoft Graph, that are using the Microsoft Graph under the cover. As more workloads start migrating or releasing new APIs, things like Exchange Online, the security and compliance components, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go and standardize across the board and start leveraging the Microsoft Graph. Right now, we don't have all the endpoints that we need for those other workloads. So in the meantime, we're gonna continue using the sub-dependencies, so the Exchange Online Management, the uh, patterns and practices, but just keep um, an eye out for when we're actually going to be rolling the changes out. We're going to try to use these videos to announce the changes or follow our official uh, Twitter account to make the changes or to, to be notified of the changes as well. What I want to do next is I want to show you, all right, so I know that these are the permissions I need. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and grant them, um, right? I'm going to use the out of the box PowerShell or Microsoft Graph PowerShell uh, application that I showed you in Azure AD. So all I need to do is do scopes and then pass in the scopes I want to connect to. It's automatically going to prompt me to go and authorize that application. I'm going to go in, I'm going to pick my MFA. Perfect. I consent on behalf of my organization. So it's actually telling me what those permissions are based on the scopes I passed in. And now what I'm doing is I've actually authenticated the uh, application. So now that application is able to go in. So if I just go and I wanna make sure that I actually refresh um, the access token because I granted new permissions. But now if I go back in and start an export, I should be able to go and do the export just fine. Right? There shouldn't be any problems with me doing the export. The one thing I wanna show you as well is if I go back, um, sorry, if I go back here, and now go to the permissions, I should see those two permissions, right? So essentially I added read, write directory data, read, write organization information, and then just the basic user permissions that come by default. So you can see that that enterprise application, which is the Microsoft Graph PowerShell app, now has the proper permissions to let me go and extract my two components. Again, I could have used my own app ID, right? So I could have gone and created an app registration, granted that app the permissions uh, that are needed, and then just do the export. We're gonna let it run for a few seconds. It's gonna go and do the export. So this is essentially the changes we're doing. So what's gonna be the impact on you is if in the past you've been just using credentials and you've been doing exports, what it was doing is it was actually looking at the permissions of the credentials, right, to be able to do the export. Now we're using those credentials to authenticate via delegated permissions on behalf of an application, right? So if you're just doing an export today, it's gonna go and use those permissions, do the export. Now, there's a chance that you might actually get the same error message that I just showed you there where it's saying, oh, the application doesn't have proper permissions. So you need to go in and do that connect MJ graph scopes and then pass the permissions in there, okay? So just wanna let you folks know, and then it's gonna go in and do the export there. So if you have any questions regarding this, or if you'd like to provide feedback, again, I think Twitter is probably the best way to reach it out to us. So again, the handle is at Microsoft 365 VSC. I hope you folks um, appreciate the effort we're doing to be transparent and standardize on the dependencies. I think this is a step in the right direction because now we're actually providing granular permissions. Whereas before you could grant your, your credentials um, like uh, global admin is a bit extreme, but let's say you would grant it like directory admin, that granted access to everything for that, that set of credentials, right? Now with using Microsoft Graph, you have access to those granular delegated or app permissions. So on behalf of the Microsoft 365 team, I uh, thank you for watching this video and we're gonna start making more videos as we, we introduce new features or change the way we're, we're doing authentication. I appreciate it. Take, uh, take care, folks.